welcome back to friday at 5 india's fastest growing and community of uh, educators and we are now one of the largest viewed uh, e convo programs in india thank you to all of you for coming back uh, every week for a great discussion uh, we are going to be covering chapter 5 of the national education policy uh, today now chapter 5 deals with teachers and what the policy recommends for teacher recruitment deployment um the service uh, environment uh, culture of the school and we have uh, two really uh, eminent and experienced educators with us who leaders with us who have uh, spent a lot of their time and professional career in working with teachers very very successfully uh, we have with us dr rajesh hasija uh, he is the director principal of indraprastha uh, group of schools uh, and there are three schools and he has mentored uh hundreds and thousands of teachers um uh, across india and we also have uh sangeeta krishnan with us and she has worked with bharti foundation as uh, the head of curriculum and training and also as the academic uh, director of gd goenka public schools uh, i welcome both my guests uh, on the show today but before i hand it out to them let me just quickly uh review how we are going to take this forward in the next one hour um i'll i'll set the context uh for today's session and then i will invite dr hasija to share his views uh for about 10 minutes in his opening remarks uh and then dr uh, sangeeta krishnan would come in and she'll talk about uh the policy articles 5.8 to 5.14 for about 10 minutes and then the most important part uh, of the session will begin which is your questions because at the end of the day friday at 5 is about a healthy discussion it's about addressing your questions uh, so please make sure that your questions are ready for um, for me dr hasija or for sangeeta ji and uh, we'll take as many questions as possible my only request is when you need to ask a question just raise your hand so that you can be um recognized and then uh, unmute yourself ask your question briefly and um, allow uh, one of the people to uh, respond to that so without wasting much time i think uh, let me just come back to the policy um the government for the first time Uh, recognizes that teachers need better facilities they need a better environment uh, they need better working conditions uh, in india and they also recognize that the status of teachers needs to be improved um uh, it it specifies very clearly that the respect that gurus used to get from the community from students is on a decline and that needs to be restored and the government is is taking some steps to do that and we will hear about them uh, uh, very shortly but there is one point that i need to make that if if it is government's responsibility to create work environments to create cultures to create the infrastructure to make sure that the real nation builders the teachers uh, have a satisfying uh, professional career it is also the responsibility of teachers to become role models to adapt to change and to contribute towards the development of the nation i think over the past uh, several years 
we have um, had a very complacent uh, attitude towards towards our own professional development uh, and sometimes we take it very lightly this might not work in the future because of covid because of blended learning coming into place because of national education policy coming into place it has become extremely important for all of us to focus on our own professional development and let me give you four reasons why should be why we should be doing it as we move into the new era the entire process of education is going to be redefined a uh, very first change as soon as blended learning comes in and if you look at nep also it's talking about uh, shifting the focus from teaching to learning now that is in, in in some in words it's just two words teaching learning and we all put it together but if we try to think about it it's a very very big shift uh, when we are teaching uh, when we are in a mindset of teaching uh, the teacher is at the center of the entire process the moment we start about learning it is the student who becomes the center of the entire uh, learning process so that shift from teaching to learning uh, is not as uh, easy as it may sound and it would require a lot of new skills to be developed the role of the teacher i remember i mean i'm a math teacher uh, i used to uh, you know go to my classroom thinking that i have to finish this particular syllabus because i have to prepare people for for this exam now that mentality is not going to work in the future because the future is not about syllabus the future is going to be about learning outcomes uh, there are certain learning outcomes that we need to help our students achieve and it is not about just finishing a textbook or a syllabus on time where we uh, do all the planning one of the big shifts that we will also see uh, in addition to shifting from from this mentality of teacher as a center to student as a center is that the future is not about lectures uh, we have been trained as teachers to develop lesson plans and then deliver a lecture based on those lesson plans well that's not going to how uh, things going to evolve in the future the future is not about lectures it's about learning experiences and this shift from designing a good lesson plan and delivering a good lecture uh, is going to um, you know we'll have to shift to designing holistic learning experiences and then enabling our students to enjoy those learning experiences uh, it learning is not going to be pushed down on students but it is uh, more going to be uh, it, it's you have to facilitate kids to learn so the second transition which will require us to train ourselves professionally Uh, is this whole transition from delivering lectures to designing uh, learning experiences another very big important uh, transition that's going to happen is that for a very long time we have considered attendance as a metric for uh, for the whole entire process right so every report card if you look at the bottom we measure that this child has been in school for uh, 200 days out of 262 days now that metric is really not going to work in the future because more than attendance and that we have seen during the pandemic more than attendance what is important is how engaged our students are in their learning so the whole concept of attendance attending a lecture will move from engage to from from attending a lecture it will move to engaging in a learning experience so engagement is going to be 
the new metric. Uh, teachers will be measured. Uh, teachers will be evaluated. Teachers will be assessed on the basis of how engaged their students are in the learning experiences that they are developing. And this would require us as teachers to develop skills which help us to build relationships with, with students because without building good relationship with students, it's impossible to get them engaged in a learning experience. And the fourth very important uh, step that if we have to really help students learn, okay, if we have to make sure that they achieve their learning uh, outcomes, then it is extremely important that the assessment needs to change from summative to formative assessment. The whole purpose of formative assessment is for me as a teacher to know where my student is, where does he need to go, and how will he go from here to there. And I, I cannot help a child uh, achieve a particular learning outcome if I don't know what his prior knowledge is and how I will take that child from that prior knowledge to the knowledge that I expect. So I think these four changes we are going to see in the future, whether we like them or we don't like them. And that is reason why all of us need to um, really focus on, on developing ourselves, teachers, uh, as a professional, all school leaders who have joined us right now uh, from all over India. I think uh, we need to really invest in empowering our teachers. Teachers are putting in a lot of effort but effort is not uh, enough to help us make a successful transition. I can do a lot of hard work, but I also need to have the right tools, the right um, empowerment to make sure that the effort results in better student achievement. Uh, with that, I would like to invite Dr. Rajesh Hasija uh, to share his views on the national education policy. Uh, I would request that he, um, you know, elaborates on what the government is, uh, what the policy talks about in Article 5.1 to Article 5.7. Uh, over to you, Dr. Hasija. Hi, good evening, everyone. Friday at five is such a catchy phrase. I love it. Friday at five, you know, it gives an excitement. Congratulations, Natulji, creating uh, this Friday at five slogan, and I, I really admire this. Uh, you have said about NEP, you have said about teacher. Yes, this is, I think, first time when uh, NEP 2020 very explicitly says that teachers truly shape the future of our children. This is the first line of the NEP chapter five. And thus the future of nation is shaped by the teacher. And this is not a, some new concept. Swami Vivekananda also said the same thing. Gandhiji focused on this same issue. But my, yes, really concern is when NEP, this chapter says, the society gave teachers, I, I'm saying in quotes, society gave teachers or gurus what they needed to pass their knowledge, skills, and ethics optimally to the student. But so far, it has not happened. I certainly have my concern on this. But then whom do I blame? I will blame myself as a teacher. Before I take up uh, the NEP focus on teacher, let me share a very small story. And I share this story very often in a different context. Today I'm taking this as a context of teacher. Atulji, whenever you want me to stop, just give me 60 seconds, right, sir? Yes, sir, I will do that. Thank you. Uh, this story uh, is of great Guru Dronacharya. You know, great Guru Dronacharya, he was uh, the class fellow of uh, Prince Drupad. So 
they both learn together and uh, dhrupad promised dronacharya that whenever he becomes a king he would appoint uh, dronacharya as the rajpuri dronacharya was in need of uh, financial support and status so he went to dhrupad but dhrupad refused to even recognize him shock to a teacher a guru he was passing through a village which is today called gurugram so he was passing through this that village when he saw the young korvas and pandavas they were playing and suddenly the ball with which they were playing fell into the well they were looking at each other how to take out the ball this is the time when uh, guru dronacharya just noticed this somewhere across bisham pitama was looking at it so guru dronacharya picked up a blade of a grass threw it in the well it got struck on the outer surface the ball he picked up another blade of the grass threw it in the well it got stuck behind the first blade of the grass and this process carried on till there was a rope which was made with the blade of the grass he pulled up the ball outside and handed over to the those young prince pita bisham pita mai saw this whole thing now look at the journey from bisham pita mai he admired what a great teacher a great teacher who had the technological skills who knew the know how and in a second he could take out the ball from the well he immediately appointed dronacharya as the rajguru i'm coming to that policies right from 1958 onwards would keep coming they are there and they will remain in the process it depends on us as teacher you and me i and you who have to become better than these policies i will certainly share the positivity of this policy nep 2020 but remember these policies are the word which are not bigger than the quality of a teacher a rule is framed that you have to stop at the red light but if i jump at the red light and nobody notices me nobody else to blame government is not to be blamed i am to be blamed myself today sir uh, why i said this one uh, atul ji shared a theme of the today's talk the restoring the respect and faith of the teachers when i read this one i was a little moved i recall my days in 1980 when uh, after doing my bsc honors in mathematics i told my father i wanted to be a teacher and uh, went to ci my father said don't go you go for your msc operation research because teachers are not respected that much and men especially in teaching costume do not respect it at all and i told my father don't worry i will make a little difference in that when i look back my journey 40 years i feel happy that i have done something despite my specialization in technology 1982 i did my specialization in computer science i have still been able to move into the teaching line the purpose was that passion that passion to be with the children passion to transform the children atul ji said that finishing slavery i said it's a journey from becoming a teacher to a facilitator from finishing slavery or covering slavery to uncovering slavery rather discovering slavery if you have these two things in mind my dear friends whether policy is good or not good you are the great teacher you would be respected you would be honored you people would have faith in you move with this passion let me come back to the uh, 2020 nep policy nep policy very very clearly says that five things which are very important probably these are otherwise also the words but never ever scripted like that 
it say the quality of a, uh, a teacher depends on five aspects. Number one, the kind of the teacher training he she has gained it. The teacher education, they have used the word. Yes, it is very, very important. The kind of the training which you have got as a teacher then comes to recruitment. Which environment you fit into there. Then your deployment, which kind of the group you add there. Then your service condition. Then your empowerment. But allow me to add two things into this. One, which I said, the passion. And second, your creativity and innovation. NEP says the five things I already said, your teacher training, your recruitment, your deployment, your survey condition, and your empowerment. But I add two more things. That is your passion, your creativity and innovation. I don't uh, segregate these two. Well. Unless these factors are focused on probably becoming a good teacher, becoming a trainer, becoming a facilitator is not that easy. Demanding the respect is not something which one should look at. Earning the respect, earning the commanding that respect comes when you are the source of knowledge for all your students. When students look, at, look up at you as the role model. However, coming to NEB 2020, it says when we talk about the, the teacher's training, this is the specific incentive or the merit-based scholarship would be introduced for four-year integrated program. That's great. That is the first step of giving incentive to the people to become a teacher. I really appreciate that that bar that government move. Not only this, the NEP very clearly says if you are into the rural sector or into the semi-rural sector and you are ready to commit yourself, in that case, the employment also is possible. That means it is not only the teacher training, but it is also the employment which would be taken care of specifically you focus on this. NEP also very clearly says that unnecessary the transfer which takes place. Now you may say when it is a government sector, government aided sector, their transfer happens without reason or with reason, probably that reason is not appreciable. Whereas in private sector, you switch over the job or you are compelled to switch over the job. In both conditions, whatever reason may be, it is taken as a transfer. And NEP uses the word that harmful transfer is should be avoided. It's a harmful practice. When a teacher is unnecessary transfer, he is not able to establish herself or himself as a role model to the teacher to become the kind of the guru he is looking at. NEP also says that teaching or teacher eligibility test TT would be made compulsory. This would be standard. It is using the word standard to inculcate the best test material both in terms of content and pedagogy. It is also there today. TT always is uh, recommended. It is appreciable that one must take it. But whether we take it to that level of content or not, it again depends on us. Also, it says NEP that focus on the blend of vocational, art education, physical fitness, and physical education, along with languages, is one area which you must look into. It suggests that teachers should be well versed with the local language. Please read NEP which says that transaction of curriculum as far as possible should be in the mother tongue at least at the early years of schooling because mother tongue is one, one approach by which a child picks up the content very, very well. It is very easy. It says that it would allow the 
schools to hire local experts who are well versed with the local languages apart from academic specialization these local experts should be good in local art entrepreneurship vocational craft work maybe andhra craft which may not be here in delhi and delhi teacher goes there so the local experts should be employed to inculcate the local skills know how to develop the skill bank and it also says schools hub with cbse is also sharing that academic hub must be developed to have the enrich the school journey my dear friends when i look at these different aspect and now categorize in them into the two area which i said passion innovative and creativeness as a teacher when you are you happen to enter in a class and you are expected to teach anything physics chemistry or mathematics remember teachers the students are looking at you as a role model for them concept of physics chemistry mathematics or academia would certainly come but more than that first they look at you they look at you, their your enthusiasm your inspiration they look at and appreciate your your communication skills your your approach your style your problem solving skill and they try to adopt those thing first then coming to the concept of your academia it is normally said that when after 10 years of schooling when you have forgotten physics chemistry mathematics what you remember that is education and what a child is going to remember problem solving skill communication collaboration teamwork and that is my dear friends when nep 2020 talks about your empowerment your training your tet your in service training program 50 hours it is saying per year every teacher and principal must go for in service training program for empowerment i am only I'll, now i have to interrupt you because now the 60 seconds begin yes thank you very much sir so i am only saying all such rule when nep is talking about this as a teacher it is expected from me when i step first time in the classroom am i able to have innovative and creativeness in my lesson every day otherwise it is it is one year multiplied by 20 experience repetition or it is 20 years different experience depending on my creativity and innovativeness or i am am i empowering myself to the new approaches of problem solving am i picking up a new skill and able to train my children to pick up that skill if i am not doing that probably i am not doing justice to my teaching i am not a right facilitator i am only covering the syllabi not discovering the syllabi and nep only says that you have a well training you have empowerment you have a right service condition surely but then service condition would come when you have empowered yourself you become a raj guru like dronachar thank you very much and all the best have a very very educative teaching journey thank you thank you sir thank you very much i think uh, you know right from the story i i didn't want to interrupt you i think i'm looking at the chat people are also uh, really really enjoying uh, what you are saying and you have very nicely put uh, things in perspective as to what our role is towards our own profession um, i'll uh, now invite uh, sangeeta ji uh, to please share her views uh, and uh, dr hasija has taken uh, a few minutes of your time so you guys can discuss it so we'll give but i'll still <laughs> i'll still give you i'll still give you the 10 minutes that you have thank Over you to you, okay thank you atul uh, rajesh it was indeed very inspiring for me also been into education for so many years now this thing to you kind of invokes a feeling in me to go back into the classroom and start my profession my journey of being a teacher once again thank you rajesh for that so dear friends good evening 
and you know this friday at five is such an awaited moment for so many of us in the education space i have spoken on this forum earlier also i've been part of the panel but uh, even when i'm not part of the panel atul will vouch that i'm there for every friday evening from five to six listening to all the speakers because this uh, what NEP says and how we are viewing it and how we are kind of con interpreting it is very, very important for all of us. And it's nice to hear different perspectives, different viewpoints, and then, you know, take our own, make our own roadmap further for our schools. These deliberations and insights and the roadmap of its implementation are really are preparing us. The whole idea of this convo is to prepare us for the big changes that are going to come into our schools. And it's going to be a, like a sea change that is going to come. And uh, we don't want to be caught unawares. We've got three years to prepare ourselves for it. And as we all know that the primary goal of, of the uh, overhauling the service environment in the schools, like Rajesh said, that there is need for a service, uh, overhauling the service environment. Of course, the change begins with me. Rajesh has said, empower yourselves. And that is where the change will really begin. But we also know that the ground factors, the realities on the ground are not always so conducive from, to allow me to change also. Sometimes it does happen that way. We've all been through those kind of environments also. And so therefore, you know, the NEP has stressed to a large part that the school has to be vibrant, caring, inclusive, so that teachers, students, parents, principals, and all support staff have one common goal. And what is that common goal? To ensure that our children are learning. Nothing beyond that. Learning, learning is not restricted to textbooks and the syllabi. It is about learning about how to learn because we really don't know the syllabi of the future. We don't know what the children will need in the future. So we have to get them ready, future ready. And for that, they have to have the right learning skills, the ability not just to learn, the ability not just to unlearn, not the ability to relearn, but to be continuously learning. And that is the learning skill that is so important. The policy recognizes the direct impact of the school environment and culture on the performance of the teachers and to ensure that children are learning. The ICSL has already defined school environment and culture as the first of the seven leadership domains that impacts students' achievement levels. So if any of you visit the ICSL website, you will see the seven domains that have been listed to make a robust school. The first domain is school environment and culture. And we are so happy at ICSL to see the NEP also recognizing. They put it in chapter five. We put it as our first priority, actually. Am I right, Atul? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So that's very important. Now, you know, uh, what actually kind of scares me a little because there has been, there are many multiple surveys that have happened. And in one of the recent surveys, it shows that at least 43% of the private schools and 67% of the government schools do not, add, do not have adequately safe infrastructure, including working toilets, drinking water, clean, attractive spaces, electricity, devices, internet, whatever the NEP mentions under this clause. So 43% of the private schools and 87% of the government schools do not have that. We are sitting in a large metro. Most of us are in from the private urban schools. So we do not know the ground realities. And that is what actually scares me. But even within the metros, even within the capital city of Delhi, I can say that there are a whole lot of schools which do not, private schools which do not provide these basic amenities for the students and teachers. So this is actually scary. And the first requirement in this direction for the private schools is to kind of provide that. So the working environment, I'm calling it the working environment, means when I go into a place to work, when I go into a place to learn as a student, as a teacher also, I'm a learner. When I go into a place, I need these basic facilities. 
If I do not have that, my mind is kind of diverted. I'm looking for the basic needs and then, you know, learning does get impacted. But there are other factors also very important, conducive to the working environment of the teachers. I'm talking specifically for the teachers, the wage factor. When we say that teachers deserve the due respect in the society, are we remunerating the teachers duly? I'm giving a small example here. A graduate passing out of Delhi University is picked up by one of the big consulting firms, an economics graduate or a maths graduate passing out of Delhi University is picked up by one of the big consulting firms as an intern. And what is this package that is being offered? Eight lakhs per annum. The same graduate says, no, I want to be a teacher. Like you and me, like Rajesh, we decided to do that. So what happens? We go, we do another degree, a BA degree or an entity or whatever, some kind of a teaching qualification. And we go into school and most of the private schools, they offer us not more than 15 to 20,000 per month. How much is that? Not even two lakhs per annum. Two, three lakhs per annum. Now, why should somebody? How do you think that we will get the respect that school that we deserve as teachers? We are the, that same person could have earned six is now or eight is earning two, three. Why should the society be respecting him? So there is this mindset change. The change in the working environment, the wage factor has to be improved. While the government schools are paying good salaries to teachers, but the contract element in the government schools and in most private schools, in the best of the private schools, this factor is so, so demeaning for most people. And therefore, this they shy away from most people. Either they shy away, the good people shy away from entering the teaching profession or are discouraged the way Rajesh was discouraged by his father. Because in today's world, in this materialistic world of today, the wage factor is a very important factor to get the teacher's respect back. I think that is something. In countries where teaching is the choice, the profession of first choice, Atul, you've been to Sweden, to Singapore, the primary teachers, the pre-primary teachers are the most highly paid teachers. Their salaries are equivalent or sometimes more than that of the college professor. Obviously, everybody, if you have a passion for young children, you want to be with them. But then this balancing factor is so, so important. Then the third factor, which is so important in our teachers, getting the teachers respect back is the boss factor. I call it the boss factor. It's a management factor or the boss factor or the school leadership factor. Simple terms is a boss factor. And that is true for any industry and it is true for the schools also. So if therefore now it is so important for the school leader now to start turning themselves from academic, from school managers, the school leader, the principal, the coordinators, everybody is currently in a very managerial role. They need to turn themselves from a school manager into an academic leader, into an inspirational leader. Rajesh is one of them, a live example in front of us who has inspired so many teachers in his school to, and has created the environment where teachers want to do more for their children, has, has instilled that passion in them. He was passionate himself and he has instilled that passion in the teachers. But how many schools, let's put our, heart, our hands on our heart and say, how many principals and school leaders today have the time, the energy and the will to inspire their teachers. They just want to finish the day. They are, fire, they are mostly in a firefighting mode. And therefore, the NAP stresses that this non-academic activities of the teachers and obviously the principal being a part of the teaching community needs to be taken away. So this whole restructuring of the school is soon going to happen. Now, it is really, really difficult because on one hand, we say, that the fees has to be contained. There are innumerable low fee paying schools in the city and they are going to be the hit, they are going to be hit the hardest. The low fee paying schools, I'm warning Atul, 
are going to be hit the hardest because the high fee paying schools, even when they increase 2% of the fee, it's a quantum. The low fee paying school hardly have any resources. And once the government, as the government is so serious on putting its own house in order, lots of children from the low fee paying schools are going to migrate into the government system. So we are going to call shut of students. And also when they migrate into government schools or when the government enhances the system, more teachers are going to be needed in the government. Qualified teachers are needed. So teachers who are not getting their due in the private system are going to move into the public, I say the government system. So we are going to, it's a vicious cycle. Low fees, low teacher salary, poor infrastructure, so migration into government. Yes, it's good to see the government schools improving. And we've actually seen this happening as a reality in Delhi. All of you who are in Delhi will vouch for the fact that the improved, not only the improved infrastructure in the Delhi government schools, led by Mr. our education minister, Mr. Manish Sisodia, but more so the greater accountability for teachers, greater respect that he has ensured for the teachers has helped the gov Delhi government schools teachers to gain respect in their communities also. So this, I think, is a very important, I mean, it's a live example of when you kind of respect the management and respect teachers, their respect in the communities also goes up. Then, of course, there is a very important feature that there has to be a teacher rep in the school management committees. Every school management committee, private or government, has to have at least two teacher reps. All CBSC rules say that, the state government rule says that, but we know for the truth that it is a eyewash. There is no system on which the teachers come onto the school management, except barring a few uh, ex uh, ex um, um, exceptions, we have mostly teachers who are selected by the management and they act as puppets of the management in the school managing committee. So this is one place we need to give, we need to give greater voice to the teachers. There has to be a transparent system in which the teachers will be brought on to the SMCs and their voice and their opinions must matter because they, their voice is critical to school improvement planning, I feel. And of course, there is uh, there are too many uh, catch-22 situations within the NAP that teachers will not be, are not supposed to be working for non-teaching activities. They're not to be kind of diverted. Their time is not to be diverted to non-teaching activities. For the government, I think, you know, it's a moment of joy for the government teachers because non-teaching activities like midday pl meal planning and managing the election duties, census duties, all these will go off and they can concentrate better on the teaching learning activities. But in the private schools, there are certain non-teaching activities which are very critical actually. And Rajesh, you are still part of a large school system. You might agree that something like a transport duty. Teachers are each one teacher on every bus is supposed to accompany the students for their safety. And this has also been a guideline that an adult lady has to be on the bus and all that. Now, if teachers will not go, who is going to ensure the safety? So then we need to build or improve upon the existing processes to strengthen the school ecosystem. We have to get the parents involved into it. We might have to hire more people for it. Where are the, the funds for hiring more people? So it's almost like a catch-22 situation. But we need to start thinking about it. We need to see how our existing processes can be enhanced or strengthened so that the whole school ecosystem is more helpful and is moving ahead. While the uh, policy like Atul uh, has mentioned and Rajesh has mentioned that pedagogical autonomy of the teachers, a passionate teacher does not really bother about whether somebody is uh, giving him autonomy or not. He carries on with his job. He or she just carries on. And the policy states that the teacher may teach in the manner they find most effective for students in their classrooms. Now, first we have to change the teachers 
and then let them be in this autonomous position. We cannot say, oh, the policy said autonomous, you carry on the way you want. It's not going to happen because the skills development that is required, the attitude change, the mindset change that is required in the teachers has to be driven by a leadership of the school, which will recognize that the school, the teacher's novel approaches are actually working in the class. So what is the, um, how do we evaluate that? The best is to make the teachers uh, peer mentors, peer coaches, evaluate each other, self-evaluation, get them to believe that they can do things differently, allow for innovation, allow for uh, sharing of best practices. That is where when we can ensure that teachers will be more empowered, will have more pedagogical autonomy. And of course, while each teacher will continue to use her wisdom in her classrooms, the mentor or the inspirational leader of the school will steer the school in this desired direction. It is important. We cannot have each teacher moving in their own directions. There has to be a, a, a kind of a force which puts the whole school community on the same page, on the same mindset and allows them to work together. Thus, what the NEP seeks in a school ecosystem, which is sustainable, self-striving and evolving, each member has to be self-driven. So each teacher in the school has to be self-driven. She has to then further inspire each student to be self-driven so that the common goal of student learning and progress, when we say student learning, I would rather say student progress. See from one point to the other point, how well are they progressing? And the progress chart of each child is going to be different. So this is what the NEP actually seeks. Is not that we have to pa pass one checkpoint to another checkpoint. It is from one milestone to another milestone, each child at their own pace. But we have to ensure that they are moving ahead in that direction. Thank you so much, Neetaji. So, so I will just end with one statement. Okay. And that is only learning teachers make good learners. That's a so, very important uh, statement, yeah. I think. Yeah, I, so yeah, I think that's teachers, and so Rajesh, what you said, teachers truly shape the future of the nation. And then I add to that that only learning teachers make good learners. Thank you so much. That is so true. And I, I did not, you know, want to stop you because uh, there were such good comments coming on the chat box, uh, and I was watching them, and I thought uh, it will be not right for our audience that if I stop you. But we have to take some questions. We have Asif Sefi. Uh, you have raised your hand. Asif, can you ask your question? Can you? Okay, hold on. Asif, you'll have to unmute yourself uh, and then ask the question. Okay, we have a problem with Asif. So anybody else who wants to ask a question, I am going to ask a question. What we do is uh, usually we have uh, people submit questions. So I'm going to take one of the questions from here. Uh, and this says, this is from Subrat Ranjan uh, from uh, Odisha. Nowadays, students are depending on internet for everything. They are not ready to accept the teachers. In this situation, how we can restore the respect and status of the teachers. So Rajesh ji, do you want to address that question very briefly? Please unmute. Yes, sure, I would love to. Uh, Ma'am, let me tell you the interaction between the teacher and taught. It's a beautiful communication process. Whenever a child finds that there is something missing in that, the child loses the attention. I would request that whenever you start your lesson, start with the story. Every day, let there be a story of 30 second, 40 second. Rather, you end that with the moral of that story. You carry on this process, try three days. Let children know something new is happening. Every day when child at 10 o'clock, oh, ma'am says something. And you start with that new. Try this for five days, you would find a change. Thank, Thank you. you very much, sir. Thank you so much. Akhilesh Singh, uh, you have a question. 
you want to go ahead uh, yes sir uh, good evening everybody uh, my question was uh, to uh, sangeeta ma'am ma'am does nep also talks about the teacher student ratio because what i know as far, as till today the ratio of teacher student is very is in a very pathetic uh, condition you know where every teacher is responsible for around 80 students uh, 80 students in the rural india and urban it is somewhere around 60 65 uh, student per teacher so would it be justified if a single teacher deals with so many students all together as you mentioned uh, the every individual child will have a different report card i do agree that every individual child should have a different report card but having six, uh, that ratio i i think it would be difficult okay. uh, number 2 sorry uh, let's let's go ahead with this question yeah. first so sangeeta ji you want to answer that sure uh, so uh, definitely the nep talks of a student teacher ratio which is more favorable than what the current realities are definitely and if we want the nep to be a reality in our lives we have to change this and i think this change has already begun rajasthan government has set up model schools where the uh, ratio is 1 is to 30 delhi government is also setting is creating uh, constructing about 300 400 maybe many more class thousands of new classrooms for the next session everywhere this change has to be you know because it is not possible for unless there is individual attention for especially for the little ones it is just not possible for a teacher to be able to observe and support teacher uh, students in the classrooms of course as they grow older we can have slightly larger classrooms because at that point of time uh, group work and monitoring becomes easier with larger groups and larger number of groups in the classroom but for small children up to grade 2 definitely we will need to bring change this there has to be a paradigm shift here can i add something here contrary to this yes sir contrary to this yeah, sure rajesh see uh, my mother you know believed in one guru and my duty was every sunday to take her on my scooter to that guru the guru was so empowered that about 10000 people would sit wait for the guru and moment the guru stepped in on the stage there was a complete silence that group had children of 5 year and the aged people of 8 year i have been to that scenario every sunday sunday after sunday because being youngest in the family it was my duty and i'm talking about 78 79 80 that made me want also reason to become a teacher uh, akhile ji said the number uh, akhile ji i normally believe raise your aura to that level that number should matter people should connect with you suraj ki garmi kam nahi hoti hai ki agar 5 billion log hain ya 500 billion log hain प्लीज मान के चलिए इस बार अपने आप को इतना बड़ा करी गुरु द्रोणाचार्य जब अपने आश्रम में करते थे कहते हैं कितने ही कौरवों पांडवों के साथ और लोग थे और वो अकेले गुरु जब कराते थे हर बच्चे को अर्जुन को वो अगर धनुष सिखा सके तो दुर्योधन को गधा भी सिखा सके मैं सिर्फ इतना कहूंगा नंबर रिकॉर्ड मेंटेन के लिए ठीक है लेकिन आजकल टेक्नोलॉजी उसमें भी आ गई है but un sab se pehle apna aura ko you raise it to that level the people that admire you like that thank you yeah i think you know what i'll add so there are both sides of the coin uh rajesh you're absolutely right that when you're going into a blended learning mode uh and also the way technology is going to uh, empower education in the future um and i myself actually when i was in the us i used to teach classes with that i mean i taught calculus Uh, but i have taught classes which had uh, over 250 students uh, but these were college students they were not young students so there is definitely uh, you know uh, important that teachers need to raise their uh, you know standards their uh, be a bigger role model but in lower classes 
smaller groups might help as sangeeta rightly said um, we have a question from mr sl jain so, uh, mr jain do you want to uh, ask your question sir unmute thank you yes, uh, atul ji and uh, sangeeta ji and rajesh ji it has been a pleasure attending friday 5 pm meeting and i leave everything and i attend to it and listen very intently and make notes the problem today is that you see it is the money india is a large country large population scarce resources so the teacher pupil ratio then the salaries that sangeeta ji was talking about these are very pertinent questions and when the private sector on the one hand you are not allowed to charge the fees on the other hand we have to pay to the teachers lakhs of rupees and thirdly infrastructure land allotment everything is the prices are sky rocketing rocketing the schools are now capital intensive you see the nice things that we are talking about is everything comes for money now for example these days sanitization when compartment examinations are taking place we are spending lakhs of rupees in buying the equipment and sanitizing the whole building and providing masks and gloves to everyone but we are not allowed to charge and as the high court has rightly said that money does not grow on trees you see it is here that we are faced with a impossible or highly contradictory kind of a uh, situation perhaps sangeeta ji and rajesh ji and atul ji you are all the very great brains perhaps you can uh, give some solution so the uh, i mean uh, rajesh want to answer that question uh sir it is very very difficult actually on one hand the the policies the structure the administration uh controls you on other hand uh, things become uh, difficult when you want to run and financial is one thing i come back to my my normal one uh, approach that is you connect with your parents connect with your children so well it's not easy it's not easy i it's much easy to say but not easy to to implement it but still i say let us connect with our children and parents to that extent when they do not care about the policies and they come forward they bond with you let's make them our equal partners in this journey of transforming children now also when we are having online classes the 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 parents are playing the role of a teacher they are at home they are collaborating with the teacher with the te formal teacher in the school they are supervising they are invigilating they are helping they are doing all such activity which a normal formal school teacher is expected to do in the school so i feel when we connect and parent realize that a yes uh, a man getting benefited so i must pay the dues because these dues are for the respect of the teacher i'm sure they would do that sir and uh, rajesh i'll just add the to what you have said i think since we are talking about economics i'll just briefly bring in a concept uh, times for average schools the times for uh, private budget schools are going to be tough economically there is no doubt about that what is important for schools is to aim for excellence see uh, in any service uh, especially in uh, services like education harvard charges a particular fee because it's harvard nobody complains about it even in india there are schools which are charging 20 lakh rupees uh per year because the perceived or uh, the per, the value that they deliver to their children the perceived value uh is considered to be equivalent to 20 lakh rupees what is going to happen uh, is in my opinion that if schools do not invest today in uplifting their quality they are going to be history they are going to Uh, feel the crunch once the government starts improving the public school system uh, and they would run into tough times so it's better to improve our value rather than uh, worry about and i think money would come i agree with rajesh if i know my child is getting good education i'm going to pay any amount no matter what the government says 
Uh, I'll bring in Malini for the last just, question. Just Malini. One, one second. Therefore, I am agreeing with Mr. Jain that let uh, ICSL write to the government. There should not be any cap on it. If I'm doing a good job, parent will pay me the money appropriate and proportionate to my effort. Let this be 20,000 or 2,000 depending on my efforts and my team of teachers. There should not be at all any government restrictions on about charging the fee like it happens in a hotel. One hotel charges me 100 rupees for a glass of water, another gives me free. Absolutely, absolutely. So Malini, your question please. Uh, good evening everyone and uh, much respect to you Dr. Hasija and uh, Mrs. Sangeeta. Thank you for the wonderful uh, convo that we've just witnessed and it's been really interesting listening to all the inputs shared though dr hasija has answered my question in the last one sentence that he said uh, my uh, worry was about this only that no doubt that the teacher deserves much respect and we are happy that the nep seeks to restore that respect and faith in the teacher but the current parent generation is actually losing out on that respect for the teacher. Unfortunately, a parent believes that he is now buying the services of the school and the teacher, and he treats the teacher as well as the school, just like any other service industry, making, itself, make, making himself or herself the clientele. So that has impacted us. I think we have all become too much into this liberalized economy, and we, bel we believed in trade, so maybe that scenario and that mindset has changed us over there. So getting back that respect is important, but then the fee cap that we have has put schools in dire straits. And it's very important that the government be told, only yesterday I was reading about uh, a per particular person talking about the college having a lot of funds and not using it appropriately to pay fee. The same was said for schools at a certain point of time a few months back in the past. I wonder why we would say that if a school had money, would it not pay its teachers? Of course it would pay its teachers, but those funds are not meant to be used for salaries. Those are for other purposes. So please, can we have some representation for the government telling them that quality of education is more important than just monetary benefits? Okay, and Malini, I'll answer that question. ICSL uh, usually tries uh, not uh, to make any political or uh, government level recommendations. Um, the last time we did it uh, was on the draft of national education policy. Um, however, because uh, this is such a uh, important measure, we will definitely discuss it with our board of advisors and three of our members uh, are already online, uh, Rajesh, Sangeeta and Mr. Jain. Uh, we will have a discussion and uh, see if there can be a possibility of us submitting a, a resolution uh, or a suggestion to the government. I will have to um, stop at six o'clock because that is our promise to everybody watching. This is a great professional platform for all of us to come together and share our views, uh, focus on topics that matter. I think what we have discussed today is a, a clear indication of the quality of uh, deliberations that happen on Friday at 5. I want you to come back next week, Friday at 5. Not alone this time. Uh, just make sure that everybody you know in the teaching community knows about Friday at 5 and is here with us on Friday at 5. With those words, I want to thank my speakers for uh, such a wonderful uh, exposition and also thank all my participants for being part of Friday at 5. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend ahead and do stay safe.